Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Boostly podcast. This is a podcast that gives hosts the tools, the tactics, the training, and most importantly, the confidence for you to go out there and get yourself some more direct bookings. Today, we're diving behind the host of a successful uh, host themselves. They're also a coach. So we're kind of looking at spotlight on their business. We're also diving into their hospitality experience. Let me introduce, we've got Amanda Stecker. She's the she's a holiday rental owner, of course, and a property business coach from Unique Cotswolds Cottages and Holiday Letology. So we're going to find out exactly what that means, what that is. And um, yeah, let's welcome her along. Thank you for joining me, Amanda. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Give yourself the elevator pitch. What is it you do? And uh, tell, tell us what you'd like to tell us about the business. Sure. So first of all, Unique Cotswold Cottages. So we are a, I'm the founder of that company. Uh, we have five owner-managed holiday cottages in the Cotswolds and we are particularly targeted at couples and uh, and their dogs and they're all very high end so it's a kind of luxury stay in the Cotswolds and the reason why I focused on that market is that when I did my research and I was starting out around five years ago I could see that there was a real lack of smaller properties that just targeted couples and so it felt like a really good place to start and budget wise it meant that I could start off buying a couple of properties in a couple of different parts of the Cotswolds and and get going quickly with that target audience. So that's one side of the business, and that's grown pretty quickly. I think within four years, um, I've built it up to five properties. I'll be looking to purchase another one next year, and the aim is to keep growing that. And then the other side of the business is the coaching business, which I actually started in the pandemic uh, because we, as lots of us were, or in fact all of us, we had to close our properties uh, a few times. In my case, it was three times over the pandemic. And so I had a bit more time on my hands. My background is training and coaching and marketing. And so I decided to combine that and set up Holiday Letology. And the reason why I did is because when I started, I didn't feel there was much help out there. I mean, there is a bit more now, but, you know, Mark was one of the few voices at the time that I started and, um, you know, Boostly. And so um, I felt really stuck when I started. I didn't know how to set my pricing, how to, um, you know, set up the property effectively, how to market it. And I feel that I made my biggest mistake was I put myself on the books of a very expensive booking agent who promised the world, but in fact sold me very cheaply, um, was very much interested in volume of sales and rather than value of sales. And I very quickly realized once I'd started with them that I could actually do it better myself. And during the pandemic, when I had the time to develop the, the, the coaching business, I'm now able to provide that support to others. Just talk us through the the Cotswolds. Is is it somewhere where you go on holiday or is it somewhere where you live? What what made you choose the Cotswolds? So the Cotswolds is in sort of heading towards the southwest part of England. It's really beautiful. It's this beautiful honey coloured stone, um, and it's and it's it's quite. It's, there's a lot of history there, uh, so it's a beautiful part of of England, beautiful part of the world, and we get a lot of visitors to the area. Uh, my partner lives in the Cotswolds, and so when I um, you know, so I've, I've, I got to know it. I'd, I'd visited it over the years, but I got to know it a lot more when I met my partner. And so it felt like an obvious choice to actually then start buying property there. So I now split my time between London, where I live with my family, and then when I'm not with my children, I'm in the Cotswolds with my partner. You mentioned you were in marketing and that side of things. What were some of the transferable skills that you've used for um or doing holiday letting in general. And what are some of the skills you think that people should have or certainly work on to, to do what we do? So I think the biggest, the biggest thing I would say is thinking about guest service and guest experience, because uh, I had worked, I'd worked in marketing, I'd worked for like advertising agencies, and I'd also worked within lots of different big financial organizations like Barclays and 
all sorts of big ones. Um, and the, when I worked in agencies in particular, but even when I was at Barclays and we were thinking about the, the, the end user, the client, it was all about making sure that you gave the best experience. And I, I've taken that into Unique Cotswold Cottages and I very much teach it because the business is underpinned by reviews and it's a very quick and obvious way for potential guests to check you out. And so if you go that extra mile for that, those, those guests, if you make sure that those amenities that they're going to desire are there, and if you give them information and great communication, then they are more likely to rave about you and that drives bookings. So I feel that that was a big thing. Um, I was also very numbers focused in my in my you know job. I had you know I was working with big marketing budgets and having to deliver and, and make sales. And so um, I'm very numbers focused in this business. So whenever me or any of my clients are thinking about setting up a property, we we start with the forecast and you know has it has it got potential as a holiday rental is are we risking our money because at the end of the day these are really big investments you know it's a lot mm -hmm. of money um so you've got to get it right uh that so that's sure. the other thing and then i'd say the third thing is thinking about the promotion of the property so like you mentioned direct bookings um how to you know when you're on airbnb how to make sure you're top of the first page rather than the bottom of the fifth page so that you are getting that visibility um so with the combination of all of those things i brought into the business and then the rest of it i i learned like lots of people you know lots of of you know listening to podcasts like this one and um, trial and error. Um, once I started working with clients, obviously that collaborative, you know, that, you know, we all learn from each other. Obviously I'm leading the way, but the, you know, we, we, you know, the, the clients learn from each other and I learn from them. One of the things which, uh, which I'd love to ask is, is we've mentioned that, you know, you can take the power back from agents. What would you say to people who are in that situation of going, well, do I put it when I first start, should I put it with an agent for a little while? Or should I just can, you know, should I dive straight in? What kind of advice would you give to, to the host listening who's in that situation? So the big fear when hosts start, in, in my opinion, is how am I going to get bookings? I just don't know how. And it's going to take all of my time. So the two worries because often people start this business as a bit of a side hustle they either you know they want to do it uh, to create a retirement income or perhaps they've got a job and they want to invest some money and then they kind of eventually want to take it over so that so it's said so because of those reasons lots of people think oh I'll just put it with an agent and they know what they're doing and they'll get me bookings and I won't have to worry in my experience and many of my clients experience that isn't really the case in that often you know, I always say those agents' objectives are different to our objectives. Mm -hmm. You know, they often they 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 for example, some some of them get forty pound or fifty pound a booking fee, so they're interested in volume and just selling as many bookings. Whereas we want to get high value bookings, and we need to trade off occupancy with how much you're charging. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I would say. If you if you get yourself tied up with an agent, you're also often tied up for a lot longer than you think. It's, it's, it's often around 18 months before you can leave. So I would say, actually, you can do this. There is enough support out there. You know, there's some free stuff, there's some paid stuff, but there really is support out there. And actually, if you don't run your own business, how do you know? How do you know how, you know, whether you could earn more? How do you know that, you know, that your guests are happy? How do you know how to get bookings year round unless you actually do it yourself? So I would say ditch the booking agents, ditch those huge commitments which really are you know huge it, you know you've got to add VAT on and booking fees and sometimes they're as much as 25 30 percent um and do it yourself because that money could be going into your own pocket and in my own case I worked out with my one small first property it cost me about eight thousand pound in commission and um and discounted bookings in my first year having a blast gonna get it on the boostly podcast boostly like bruce lee because it's so hard and the tea is loose leaf making up those rhymes don't write it just do it loosely